Today's show is sponsored by Tweezy R. So Alan, if you want to do some upkeep between eyebrow threading sessions or your next trip to the Chiropodist, having a reliable set of beauty implements in your medicine cabinet comes in handy. I've not been one for plucking my eyebrows, Mark, but as I've got older, I've noticed those nostril hairs and toenails are getting harder to deal with. Yeah, me too. It sounds like you need Tweezy R beauty implements. They're surgically engineered, perfectly balanced and sharpened, and made from surgical grade stainless steel. All I need now is a lifetime warranty. Well, now you mention it, Alan. Not only are they unparalleled in quality, they also come with a lifetime warranty. Get f- Seriously? As long as you've not lost or abused them, and we don't want you abusing them, fill in the warranty form when you purchase your Tweezy R surgically engineered tweezers, and they'll be replaced for free. To order your Tweezy R surgically engineered beauty implements, Go to tweez-er.com and enter the promo code XPATS10 at checkout and receive 10% off your order. Today's guest is from Hoyk in the Scottish Borders. He's been here in Perth almost eight years and is the founder of the 5,000 plus strong Scots in Perth Facebook group. Chris Batten, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, good well. to see you, mate. Five thousand members. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good number considering you only probably set it up what four or five years ago. I. It was a weird one. Um, well, I've, like I say, I've been here almost eight years at the end of January, and um, I was always on that Pums in Perth, and I'd actually just put a post up just saying, "Is it actually a Scottish page here?" Somebody got blocked us and says, well, I think there was, but it only had a couple of hundred members and it never really took off kind of thing. Yeah. Ah, I'll start it. So, literally, as I think I was actually on the plane using the Wi-Fi and I'm just sitting, pissed about my phone, setting this group up. And I just literally added um, every kind of Scottish person that I knew in Perth. Because when I first arrived in Perth, I knew nobody. I played uh, a bit of semi-pro football when I was back home. And that's what I was wanting to get into when I came over. When I came over here, I knew that getting back into football would have been a good way to meet people. Yeah. So I literally trolled Facebook. Um, I was living in uh, Burswood, kind of stroke Vic Park at the time. Never had a car. So I literally just thought, oh, is there pitches or teams round about the Vic Park area? So I found a team called Vic Park Rovers. It was a Masters a masters League, so I had to lie about Mage for a start. 32 when I arrived, <laughs> and uh, they were over 35, so I just said, did I just lie? And they were like, oh, fine, oh, you'll be fine. So when I got there, there was like three or four Scottish boys, three or four English. It was like a it was like a British team. British like team, that, yeah. yeah. Which, was, which was ideal. It was a great way to meet. Like, I literally got invited to a barbecue at the weekend right after that, and it literally just That's superb. instantly That's expanded my friends group, who had a a massive Australia Day uh, party to uh, 20 or 30 folk, which then expanded that, uh, that yeah. group again. And obviously playing football every Sunday, meeting different people, it was just it was just easy kind of thing. Um, so like I say, trail on Facebook, and I was like, oh, so, like I'll get back to the Scots and Perth thing. But so I did all the boys onto the group. Within probably the morning, there was maybe 60 or 80 people. A couple of days later, they were adding friends and stuff like that. It's about 150, 200 people. So by the time I got back to Perth, there was about 400 people on the page. That's Jeez. true, me, yeah. And I was like, tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to organise a piss-up. That sounds very without, Scottish thing to do. even thinking about it, all right? So I was like, I'm going to organise a piss-up. So the first ever uh, Scots in Perth night was at the Vic Park Hotel. Hundred, you filled it. 160 folk. And there was only 400 people on the on the. On that's, the group at yeah, the time, that's a pretty good. So return. I think I, I was I was looking at him for about hundred. I think I was got to try and sell about 160, 170 tickets. I got Iron Blue behind the bar. <laughs> I got a, a Scottish DJ that played Scottish music. Um, we got Scotch pies for a, um, the Grand Boulevard Coffee. Oh Boogie yeah, Hunt. yeah, yeah. Think he's good. He done us a wee deal on that. So, and literally got 160 folk, and it was only on the Thursday. Speaking to my mother about it, she was like, "Oh, what are you up to the weekend?" And I was like, oh, I've got a, I've got a Scotch night. She's like, what happens if there's trouble? Well, you put 160 strangers <laughs> in a room and people start going on about Celtic, Rangers, Hemp's Hearts. Yeah. I was like, I never even thought about that, Mum. Yeah. And if I've probably I've probably held six or seven events. There's never once been an argument, never once been a crossword. 
I'll never forget a time when there was a woman. Um, I'm not sure how old the page was, but a woman had had arrived here um, with four kids. Yeah. And her container was delayed. Her husband was still back home. He was like, I oh, can't I get across here. Container was in uh, June up. They had literally just, they were about to move into their new dream home and had no furniture whatsoever. Nothing. Literally the suitcases, a suitcase and the clothes in their backs. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and this woman, uh, must have, I think she joined the page before she arrived, asking for the best areas for kids, yeah. um, schools, as what you do yeah. whenever, he, whenever he moved to a new it, country. It's great for me, honestly. Uh, I don't think you, well, you obviously want to hear then, because I've been here for coming into 10 years, 9 years, something like that. But I, I looked for a page as well to get it. And just get it. So I, I had a mate who was here, and I was just bombarding him with questions aye. after questions. But I genuinely, I was really looking for some like Scots and Perth. And, uh, yeah, it's understandable why she came there and looked for it. So. Aye, aye, well, this, this woman, literally within 24 hours, had beds, toys, oh, so TV, everyone just pulled it couch. out. It was all like freebies. They yeah. never had to pay for a thing. They were, they were organised. People were dropping it off to their house. Um, and this went on for two or three days. There was times she was having to, she actually had to say, I've got everything I need now. Yeah, and literally, like a house. literally, literally <laughs> within 70, 72 hours, she had everything she possibly needed for the kids, beds, mattresses, lounge, TV for them. People were donating like consoles and stuff like that. That's outstanding. It's yeah, amazing, isn't it, how people come it's together. Not, I, yeah. I, when you're among your own. It, and I still, and obviously Scots, English and Irish are all, I think we're a bit cliquey. A yeah. wee bit. Yeah. And, well, it's still uh, tribal, I think, aye, definitely. You know, you're not in ten, so it's no, a bit like that. It's just, no, it just happens, doesn't aye. it? You come across here, the sole intentions, uh, meeting Aussies, spending time with them, yeah. befriending them and stuff like that. But he seemed to, he kind of drift to your own. Yeah. Um, Honestly, Chris, I mean, he, did, he did do that on purpose. Well, we've, we've said that twice already in the show. We've yeah. only had two episodes and we keep talking about it, but this is exactly why we started this, because, you know, I, we did the same. We came over, we tried to blend in, become Australian citizens and everything else and then you get drawn to people that like you and, and you know, a lot of the time it turns out that there's people, expats and yeah. stuff because we all had right. the same experiences, you know yeah. it's just exactly what you're saying I think it's just because you've all got something in common, isn't yeah. it? That's yeah. all yeah. it is Well, you've got the same mindset, haven't you, really? Yeah. It's like, well, how, how many people say yes to, to moving out of the country? I mean, how, uh-huh. how many, you know, it's like how, how many people say, right, okay, I'm going to take my whole family Kids, whatever, dog, everything, and take it away for you know, grandparents. I mean, the worst thing for us was, oh, you know, know. And you get the question, I got the question a couple of times, you know, you're not going to take my mum's grandkids away for it, right? It's like, pff, what, what? I mean, that, sure. that's the kind of thing you get, and it's, but it does, you, the more you speak to people, they've all had that question. Uh, a lot I, of them have had that I question. I was quite lucky. Um, I came, I, my ex um, came across first, and then I came across for three months' holiday. So literally, we travelled the right up to Coral Bay. We've seen aspirants. Then we've done the East Coast in a camper van. Oh, yeah. Um, so I literally holidayed for three months. She yeah. quit her work for three months. I went back home. She was only a working holiday visa, so everything that was, that was it. Literally came across for three months, seen everything I wanted to see, done everything I wanted to do, and then she got the chance of um, sponsorship. So I managed to get de facto on her, on her visa, so that's probably the one thing, that one good thing that came out yeah. Out with the relationship kind of thing was the fact that I was able to come across here. Listen, I used to get homesick, go to Duns or go to Glasgow when I was back home. Yeah. I was a right homeboy. Yeah. Like I'm, I would never ever imagined, probably, even probably 10 years ago, I would have moved away from home with no family here, myself. That, that's and a I would bold have still move. I mean, that, yeah, that's a huge move. Like and there's, yeah. I, there's only been two times that I've thought, I'm going to go home. Uh, what what sort of kept you then? But what kept you going, Chris? I keep I keep thinking to myself, people people back home didn't ask you how you're getting on, right? That like they, they're not overly interested. Yeah. You, you get back and your good friends always stick together. Yeah, always keep in contact. Like I've got a WhatsApp group with five or six of my best mates from back home. Same here, <laughs> and we've always got the chat. Yeah. But you find a lot of people under overly interested. Yeah, he rock back like I rock back to hike. It'd take me an hour to get along the high street. You'd have people, oh, oh, I've not seen you for a while. Uh, it's like you've yeah. never been away. I've yeah, been, I've like, been yeah. in Australia for six years. Yeah. Oh, have you? And some people don't realise, but when you get back and you're with your mates, it's it's as though you've, you've always been. been together. Yeah. But I just look at the life you can have, a uh, lifestyle you can have across here. Yeah. Dang it's wrong. The weather's a massive pool, but and a lot of people seem to think, oh, oh, you must be flush with the cash. You must be minty. 
It's the sunshine live, that does I'll that, live, mate. I'll live five minutes away from the beach. Yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't cost you anything to go and lie on the beach, and it doesn't cost you anything to take a walk up West Coast Highway. And they seem to think that. It, I, they understand why, but they seem yeah. to have in their, in I, their I head. I reckon it's the sunshine. I mean, I, I, I talk to people about this all the time as well. I even talk to your mates back home. They, they, they know you're not bragging and stuff. Aye, but, aye. But. But some people, maybe acquaintances, people don't know you as much as well when you're putting pictures of you in the pool or you at the beach and yep. stuff like that. And it's, it's, particularly with all the COVID stuff, it's been terrible. I've, I've not posted half as many Aye. pictures as I used to post. And and I feel like, well, I should be because I still want to show Gran and Grandpa and you know, all, the, all, the, all, these, all these people out there, I want to show them, you know, this is what we're doing because they're happy for us, you know. Aye. And they, But at the same time, some of the other ones, you think, well, I don't want to upset people because they can't get out of the house and stuff. And we're so lucky to be here, you know. I kind of, I kind of, I'd probably piss a few folk off because they'll say, oh, you're so lucky. And I'm like, well, hold on a minute. You can literally walk up the road five minutes away and go and see your mum and dad yeah. or go and see your grandparents or go and see your niece or your nephew and stuff like that. I says, you're lucky to be able to do that. Yes, yes, yeah. we've improved our life because we took a massive gamble to come across here. Yeah. But it's... It, it's I'm, got its drawbacks though, hasn't it? Ah, like, of course it does. Yeah, because you, you, the family thing is massive. Aye. And you don't realise it, and it's only when sometimes you might have a bad day and you start thinking of stuff. Aye, and you, you just sometimes you just wish you could be back home. I, I've, I've been very, very lucky that nobody in my immediate family has been terminally ill or ill or 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 ready to pass away. Been very lucky, so I, yeah. I've no idea what what situation or how I'd be if that was to rise. Yeah, like my my dad's my dad's seventy three, seventy four year old. Hoik is like the second highest. Covid rate, is in, that right? In Scotland at the moment, because yeah. nobody's took it seriously. That, that's like exactly what's wrong. My, my yeah. parents were going on, like my mum and stepdad were away to Turkey in August. Yeah, cause because they could. Why? Why would you go? Uh, you know, uh, even if you're allowed to, why it's would the you government go? as well, though, isn't it? Because they, they, they're allowing you to. Yep. So, yeah. I, at the end of the day, if they took control. They're basically saying you can do what you want. They don't want you to, but legally you can do what you want. Yeah, that's and right. It's just the wrong way of doing it. Yeah, that, look what they did here. I mean, Martin yeah. McGowan just went nope. No yeah. more. Shut the borders. Yeah, you'll come in when I'm re- when you're ready. That's it. Threatened with, with getting sued. Yeah, and Clive Palmer sued him. Yeah. Like he, was, he was adamant. He stuck to he his. He just guns. put his foot yeah. down and stared right. to it. And, and look, look, we can have this conversation three years in a room. I know. You know I, and yeah. we were, to be fair, we're probably at yeah, social that's distance. Just by chance, because we've got purely big <laughs> <laughs> oh, <you're> just <laughs> lucky. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like we, we can do this, right? And you couldn't do this in the UK. Nah, but three years in three different households. The rules are still bonkers in the UK. Like now, you can't go and visit family. But you can have a whipman come in and do work on your house. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, it's crazy. there was up, there was uproar. I, I'm on, I'm on this like hike Facebook page, and this guy's painting cheap, uh, cheap uh, decorating, right? Wallpaper painting, and everybody's going mental. I was, he's like, but legally, I'm yeah. allowed to. Yeah, I'm and, giving he's a, and he's he's putting the good deal and all that. Yeah. People have got money to spend because yeah. they're they're stuck yeah. inside and all going out in the piss. Ma, ma, I've got quite a strong opinion on that one, right? I mean. I, People, I don't understand why people are so against that. So these, they're all complaining, we all want to get back to work. Well, these people are able to get back to work. Now, you might not be, but they are, right? And if they come in, and my, my mate, one of my mates is a carpet uh, cleaner, right? So he's got his rules and regulations. They, they, they agree before he gets in. I come into your house to clean your carpet. You stay in one room, I stay in another, and we do it. And, and it's all social distance. Everyone's perfect. Now, what's wrong with that, right? No. The difference is when you get three or four people and they go into the one house at Christmas or whatever, right? They have a cup of beers or they have a cup of tea before they know they're a bit too friendly and they're getting closer and closer and closer. And then they forget and, about and what And then they forget to it all together, right? Where there's a workman coming into your house, isn't they going to forget? We're no. pretty early into it, aren't we? Because like, we've, got, like, this van- we've got this view where we're complete outsiders because we've not experienced it. No, it is. It's, it's, quite, it's quite hard. The complacency is probably going to catch us at some point. I think I'm a bit worried about that, I have to say. But, I yeah. never really took it. Like, across here, right, because you're isolated anyway, I never really took it overly serious. Yeah. Uh, until my dad's next door neighbour, who I've knew for years, passed away because of COVID. Yeah, and just sort of seeing the posts and stuff like that on Facebook. Yeah. Makes it real. It was a fact that this woman had three, four, four daughters, and uh, a couple of sisters. And they couldn't even all go. They couldn't. What really hit me was the fact that they couldn't go into the hotel, the, the sorry, the hospital bed. Yeah, they couldn't comfort her. Yeah, they couldn't comfort each other. You can't even to, imagine that. They had to distance each other, even in the hospital. And that that's when I was like, I phoned my dad. I was like, right, you need to listen and listen good. Yeah. Stop going out. My dad was up, I went up to the shops to get his, to get his shopping and that. I was like, you need to wind yeah. your neck. 